As Terence Watanabe transitioned into adulthood, he stepped into the expansive shoes of responsibility, inheriting the role of CEO at the tender age of 20. His adept leadership steered the Oriental Trading Company toward unprecedented success, transforming it from a local enterprise with 17 stores into a behemoth generating a staggering $25 million per month. However, the relentless pursuit of business excellence left Terence ensconced in a world consumed by work and his personal life became a casualty to the demanding grind. His decision to sell his share in the company marked the dawn of a new era, one he envisioned as a philanthropic and leisurely retirement, emphasizing that any pursuit devoid of joy wasn't worth his time. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button and the notification bell to stay updated on our daily videos. Yet, Terence's foray into a life of leisure took a turbulent turn. Las Vegas, the glittering oasis of entertainment and extravagance, became the backdrop for his unexpected odyssey. Fueled by the intoxicating mix of gambling and luxury, Terence found himself entangled in a web of excess with his fortunes fluctuating not on the stock market, but on the whims of luck at the casino tables. This saga unravels the profound consequences of his escalating gambling habits, the opulent incentives offered by casinos, and the courtroom battles that ensued, unraveling a narrative that transcends the mere trappings of wealth to delve into the complexities of human folly and the gamble with destiny itself. Ashley? Take a moment. In the kaleidoscopic milieu of 2007, Caesar's Palace, a renowned bastion of opulence and extravagance in Las Vegas, encountered a perplexing anomaly. A staggering 20% of its exorbitant revenue was attributed to a singular individual, Terence Watanabe. Born in the heartland of Omaha, Nebraska, in 1957, Terence was heir to the illustrious legacy of his father, Harry Watanabe, founder of the Oriental Trading Company, a preeminent carnival supplier. Terence, starting his professional journey at the tender age of 15 within his father's enterprise, swiftly ascended to the role of CEO by the age of 20. Under his stewardship, a strategic pivot towards party products catapulted the business from a local enterprise with 17 stores to a colossal revenue generator, raking in an astounding $25 million per month. However, the zenith of his success was accompanied by a relentless work ethic that left little room for a life beyond the confines of the business. Having dedicated more than two decades to the relentless pursuit of success, Terence confronted the specter of burnout at the age of 43. In a pivotal decision, he relinquished his stake in the Oriental Trading Company in October 2000, opting for a retirement marked by philanthropy and leisure. The establishment of the Terry K. Watanabe Charitable Trust became the hallmark of his post-business endeavors, channeling millions towards causes such as AIDS and cancer research, along with various political initiatives. Despite these commendable philanthropic efforts, Terence found himself at a crossroads, struggling to derive satisfaction from a life that had become synonymous with the boardroom. In search of new meaning, Terence turned his attention to the vibrant lights of Las Vegas. What began as a leisurely exploration of the city's renowned casinos soon metamorphosed into a high-stakes gambling odyssey. His gambling exploits, initially centered around the Caesars Horseshoe Casino in Council Bluffs, Iowa, expanded exponentially as hosts from Iowa casinos encouraged him to diversify his ventures to the iconic Las Vegas Strip. A ban from Steve Wynn's luxurious establishment, Wynn Las Vegas, opened the door for Caesar's Palace to entice Terence with an array of tailored incentives, transforming him into one of the casino's most lucrative patrons. As Terence immersed himself in the glittering allure of Vegas, his gambling endeavors took a perilous turn. Extended gambling sessions lasting up to 24 hours, fueled by an insatiable appetite for risk, resulted in monumental losses sometimes reaching millions in a single spree. The staff at Caesar's Palace, recognizing Terence as a high roller of unparalleled proportions, spared no expense in providing him with an unprecedented level of VIP treatment. Customized incentives, 
including concert tickets, monthly airfare allowances, and substantial store credits, were just the tip of the iceberg. Terence found himself ensconced in lavish accommodations, pampered by attendants catering to his every whim. Thanksgiving 2007, when he confided in his brother and sister about the staggering extent of his losses. In less than a year, Terence had managed to dissipate a mind-boggling 127 million dollars. Even a 17 million dollar loan extended by Caesar's Palace proved insufficient to stave off financial ruin. His decision to sell his Omaha mansion for 266 million was a desperate attempt to offset the burgeoning debt. Fire? Um, big lad. Can I kiss it? Okay. By early 2008, Terenza found himself bereft of funds, owing the casino a whopping $14.7 million. Blaming Caesar's palace for his precipitous downfall, Terence initiated legal proceedings against the casino, alleging that it not only facilitated but actively encouraged his excessive drinking and gambling. The ensuing legal battle saw both parties dropping their lawsuits, but the damage to Terence's life was irreparable. Facing the looming specter of criminal charges, and the prospect of 28 years in prison for his unpaid debts. Terence's life cascaded into a tragic chapter. The once celebrated entrepreneur, who had generously donated to charitable causes, found himself entangled in a web of financial ruin, legal woes, and a deeply compromised well being. In conclusion, the narrative of Terence Watanabe's life unfolds as a captivating odyssey, replete with highs, lows, and the ever-present shadows of excessive indulgence. From the pinnacle of success as the CEO of a thriving business to the depths of financial ruin amidst the dazzling lights of Caesar's palace, Terence's journey echoes the age-old adage that with great wealth comes even greater responsibility. The cautionary tale warns against the alluring temptations of the casino, where unchecked passion can swiftly transform into ruinous addiction. Watanabe's post-Vegas life, marked by a battle with cancer and financial struggles, underscores the somber consequences of unchecked excess. Yet, amidst the struggles, Terence's attempt to find redemption and make amends paints a portrait of resilience and introspection. His story stands as a mirror, reflecting the fragility of human fortune, the consequences of unbridled desires, and the enduring capacity for self-discovery and transformation. Terence Watanabe's Odyssey remains a compelling narrative, prompting contemplation on the delicate balance between success, excess, and the pursuit of a meaningful life.